Okay. Got it. Okay. Hi. Uh, welcome to another fell. Uh, great, terrific fell program. This one is record setting in it in attendance, and uh, uh, and there were a lot of new mem uh, new people who were viewing us probably for the first time. So I thought I'd take this opportunity before we get to Linda to, to tell you a little bit about fell. So you know who the sponsor of this uh, program is. Uh, so I'll start. Fell is, uh, Fel is a uh, non-sectarian social organization comprised of active senior men, mostly retired, who seek camaraderie and want to participate in a variety of group activities with other men of similar interests and age. We seek to inspire, motivate, and connect. We are friends enjoying life. What does FEL member, what does FEL offer its membership? Well, we have in-person and online programs at the Mirowitz Center. Mirowitz Center is our sponsor as of uh, about 18 months ago. So we are part of Mirowitz Center. We are a nonprofit organization now. Uh, we also have monthly breakfasts or lunches for for men, and uh, we have uh, we have travel. We do we travel. We go to we went on to Bush Stadium because of COVID. It was severely limited. Uh, we went to Bush Stadium. We took a tour at Washington University. Their art uh, pro uh, project there, and uh, and and uh, we it will definitely be offering volunteer opportunities with various other nonprofits uh, in the St. Louis area. And uh, we'll, we'll also resume uh, organi organizing uh, small group activities of like pickleball or uh, golf or bridge or whatever you wanna come up with. If you wanna get a group, we'll organize it. We'll help you. Uh, plan it. Uh, to become a member, you have to be a male. And uh, you, you'll you contact Daniel, who's sit on your screen, Daniel Landsbaum, and uh, he will uh, help you uh, register. It's very easy. Uh, he's going to post on the, on the chat his uh, email and his phone number, so you can easily sign up. Uh, Another mo a note I want to point out is that uh, because there's such a large quant people here, we're going to give priority to questions that are placed in the chat. So if you know how to use the chat, use the chat because that'll be the first priority. Second one, if you want to raise your hand, Daniel will call on you. And now let me tell you about uh, Linda. I'm very too excited uh, to introduce you to Linda, customer. Linda has been a career interior designer since 1976. So for 45 years or so, she sold you stuff. And today she joins us to talk about getting rid of some of the stuff she sold you. <laughs> So we're gonna talk about downsizing or just simplifying your life, or as she says, lighten up your life, both physically and emotionally. And I can tell you from experience, getting rid of some stuff is a, an emotional relief as well. Uh, you have, so she's gonna talk about taking action while uh, you are still able to do so and you are in control. So here's Linda to tell us about what am I going to do with all this stuff? My kids <laughs> don't want it. So without further ado, I give you Linda Cusman. Thank, thank you, John. And thank you for asking me to do this program. <clears throat> uh, I am just blown away by the number of people that have signed up for this program. And then I thought about it and I thought, if we look at the collective amount of stuff that is on this program today, 
we would probably be able to fill the entire city. <laughs> so it's time. It's time for us to address getting rid of some of it and getting rid of it in a good way. And the reason that I wanted to do this program is because I just went through it. And I had been dreading it for a long time. I had a very large house. I was a home-based business, so I had a full resource library, two offices, eight file cabinets. My husband, and when he closed his plant, he moved his little office to home. Uh, I mean, we just had stuff. I had storerooms full of my kids' stuff that they left. Oh, mom, can we just leave this here with you? Well, what was I going to say? So they had all that stuff that they hadn't looked at, touched, didn't even know was still there. And I would walk by all of this and think, oh my God, what am I going to do with this? And then at one point I thought, well, I'll tell you what, I'll die and let it be their problem. And they didn't love that idea. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I, I think I'll look at this in a little different light. <laughs> so when my husband did die, unfortunately, um, my older daughter, Stephanie, came to stay with me for a while. And she noticed that it was time that we needed to start clearing out a little bit. So I said to her, take whatever you want. And she was smart because she started saying, Mom, we need to start shredding a lot of these papers. We need to go through that. And then she took things like my old long playing albums, my LPs, and she took them to vintage vinyl and she made some money off of it. That's something you guys all think about. If you have those kinds of things, vintage vinyl and another company, and I don't know the name, but there's one in Chesterfield Mall, um, could possibly purchase some of your records, albums. Um, at the end of this program, a list of resources that I compiled for you will be sent out an email so that you won't have to write a lot of stuff. You won't have to remember a lot of stuff because we're sending out a whole resource list for you. The main thing that people talk about is their china, silver, and crystal that their children don't want. Now, I asked my daughters, and their first reaction is, no, no, I don't want it. And then as I was starting to go through things and so on, my younger daughter, Meredith, decided, you know, Mom, I think I will take it. And I was thrilled. And she told me the reason that she changed her mind and I'm saying this on purpose because if all your children have already refused it, when you tell them they're really getting rid of it, they possibly could change their mind. So ask them again before you get rid of it. But she said, you know, they hold memories for her and the holidays and so on. And so she decided she was going to use my things while, because she's putting on the, ho the high holidays and so on now. So I thought that was really nice. You do know that there's not a big market for these things, but I do have, a, there is a company called Replacements Limited, which will be on the list, that still does take some of that type of thing. I can tell you silver plate is not worth anything anymore and pretty much nobody wants it, but um, sterling you actually can sell and as a meltdown, not necessarily to keep as you know utensils and lead crystal there's a reason there's a name like lead crystal it's got lead in it so it's not not too well received anymore but you can sell some of this if you have valuables but you don't know how valuable they are then on this list you're going to see to contact codner galleries for fine art and, and sculpture and they also have the name of a um, gentleman who does antique kind of appraisals and can find buyers, et cetera. I can tell you the things that are more valuable today, and that's old toys. I'm talking about vintage toys and train sets, um, 
board games that are very old and original. And of course, everything has to be in pristine condition or close to it at, in order to get the value or the money out of it. But the things that you think were not valuable today is. So before you get rid of things like old dolls or old toys, um, check them out. You can go online, you can find out value. You can. The nice thing is now we really have resources online to check these things out. You can go on to um, eBay and find out what some of these things were going for. And I did that and it was very helpful. So what happened with me is <laughs> I, uh, I got to tell you, once I got into it, especially when Meredith was with me, we went through boxes and boxes and boxes of photographs. I had my mother's, my, my, my parents, my in-laws and mine, and there were duplicates. I mean, thousands of pictures. And I had a thing about not throwing away photographs. It was like a little, you know, oh, I can't throw somebody's photograph away. Well, after we went through it, had fun together with memories, and it was a really, really nice experience. Um, and we pulled the ones that we wanted, and particularly, you know, the ones that we knew who they were, um, because there's a lot of pictures that no clue who these people were. Once I said, okay, let's start throwing away, it was like, oh my gosh, I did it. And once I started, it was almost like I couldn't stop. And I was just having this wonderful time just throwing things away. And it was very cathartic. It was very, that's why I say enlightening and lightening up my life. It was a, actually turned out to be a fun experience. So that's why I'm saying if you're dreading it and you're stalling and you're not doing it because it's so overwhelming, it isn't once you get started. And since you'll have a list of resources as to how you can deal with things, It'll take some of that stuckness away. And I know you all, I guess you all remember the movie, The Jerk. Anyone remember The Jerk with Steve Martin and how when he was lost everything and he was leaving his mansion, he's like, I don't need anything. I, I'm leaving. I don't need anything. And he walks by and he goes, well, maybe I'll just take this. And as he's walking, he's like, well, then I could take this chair and I will take that. And he loaded himself back up again. Be careful that when you're getting rid of stuff, get rid of stuff. Though I also have to tell you to be careful not to get rid of something that you really did want. And what happened with me is I, <laughs> when I moved, and it's because I downsized, you don't have to be downsizing, but just clearing out, even if you're not downsizing now, you may be in the future or just getting rid of that stuff that's everywhere is great even if you're staying where you are. But I had thought that I had taken my, my water pitcher and my ice bucket. I had put it to where I was to take it with me. And by the time we, I, had a, I had an estate sale, I had a guy come clear out the other stuff. I, I did all the different steps necessary. And then I moved. And I went to get my water pitcher in my ice bucket, not there. So I'm like, now these were not valuables. <laughs> these were not even sentimental. I just liked that water pitcher. I didn't care that much about the ice bucket, but I was so bummed. So I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I thought, wait a minute, I think I'll go to Goodwill. So I went and I bought back my water pitcher for $1.86. But I got my water pitcher back and I was really happy about it. So little things like that. Um, as our stuff grows, and it does grow, the stuff that's behind it that started originally, you don't even know what it is, I'm sure. I know I didn't. Um, so be aware that you're not going to miss it. As my older daughter says, if you haven't touched it, used it, or even know it's there in two years, get rid of it. Now, most people don't do that. But I really learned something from that comment. Because now that I've gone through that whole process, I make sure 
that I keep up with the shredding. I keep up with, you know, shredding documents as soon as they get past a certain age. I only keep a certain amount of the paperwork and get rid of the the older ones and so on. And one of the reasons that is so crucial. So if you guys don't have a shredder, best investment, they're not expensive. Um, the best example was when my husband was clearing out some old paperwork of his and he had a box of checks and checkbooks and stuff in a, in a small cardboard box. Unfortunately, he put it on top of the car while he was doing some other things in the garage and he forgot it was on top of his car. So he drove away <clears throat> and the checks, of course, you know, fell off and scattered. Well, one day I get a call and I didn't even know, I did not even know my name was on this account. It was his account. I never used it. <clears throat> most importantly, excuse me, <clears throat> most importantly, the bank had been closed. The bank with these checks didn't even exist anymore. I mean, it was gone. And that's why he was just throwing it away, thinking, well, what harm could there be if the bank didn't exist? Well, the phone rings one day and I, I hear um, Linda Customer. I'm like, who's calling? And they said, the prosecuting attorney of Jefferson County. And I'm like, why? And they said, are you Linda Customer? And I said, yes. They said, well, you stole the backhoe. And I said, what's a backhoe? And they went, oh, we kind of thought this was suspicious. I had no idea what a backhoe even was, let alone that I stole one. And of course, I found out it was a giant piece of heavy equipment. So I don't know how I could have stole one. But the key was these checks were used. My name was signed, not my husband's. And these checks were used all over town and Walmart took them, even though they claim they're very careful about not taking checks, you know, without checking back all over the place. It took me a year in the FBI to get out of that one. That is why it is so important not to throw out documents, paperwork, even if you think they're nothing, even if you, uh, the bank didn't exist, don't do it throw it out because it can come back and bite you. And it did me, but I did learn what a backhoe was. <clears throat> I don't have it anymore. Too bad. But that's the kind of thing that can happen if you're careless. The other thing about being careless happens if some, and I heard this not long ago, some people hide valuables in pockets of clothing and then they give away the clothing without checking the pockets and then they're out. Uh, same story with um, hiding money in books or behind pictures and frames. Wherever it is you might be hiding your valuables, make sure that you remember that and go and get them before you just start giving away your stuff. Because, I mean, they lost a lot. In fact, I remember when I was a little girl, <clears throat> we were moving and my mother gathered all her silver and put them in a bag, you know, a big bag, and hid them in, in the kitchen behind a little cubby hole wall so that while the movers and everybody was there, she would, you know, make sure that nobody would take it. Unfortunately, she forgot about it. So the people who moved into our home had a wonderful surprise one day when they found the treasure. So be sure that you think about where your, your valuable is when you're dealing with your stuff. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about is medications. You can't just throw out medications. They poison the ground, they poison the water, they, they really, people are doing that and it's causing a great deal of trouble. So, what I did was I found out that the Creve Corps Police Station has a chute in their lobby where you can take your um, prescriptions, be sure to take the label off, scratch it out if you can't peel it off, though you usually can, make sure your identity and the name of the drug is not there, and then just drop the bottles or packages or whatever in the chute. 
Now, other municipality police stations may have it. I only know about Creve Corps, but you can, you can check yours. When it comes to electronics, you can't just throw electronics away. Uh, there you, Best Buy was, and I'm not sure if they still are, but they were collecting uh, uh, electronics for recycle. There are companies that will recycle them. It does cost to uh, recycle electronics, but you can't just throw them away. Some, and I know Chesterfield and Creve Core and a couple other places periodically will have for no charge recycle period times where they where you can bring your stuff, all kinds of stuff, electronics sometimes and your usual um, shredding stuff. If you have big boxes, like I, at one point I couldn't have shred all of the documents. I had Sandy's from his business. I had my parents from their business. I don't know why I still had that. I had my own business stuff and it was just big boxes full. I shredded a lot of my own, but I ended up taking it over to a, um, a recycle shredding place in the Dealman Industrial area. And I actually watched while they were shredding it because I'm not very trusting and I wanted to make sure that what it was going to be shredded. So they let me watch. It was really fun to watch, by the way. And that's a good place. And it was not expensive at the time I did it. I think it was like $10 or something for five boxes. So uh, that's important that you look at that resource. Um, let's see, the other thing I was looking at, oh, auctions. There's a lot of online auctions that <clears throat> you can check out yourself. Like I say, eBay, there's Neighborhood Marketplace, there's Facebook Marketplace, and then there's, I just found this. This is a place called Piddle Crick, <laughs> Piddle Crick Hill Auctions. And, and, it's, an, and an, it's an antique store, well, it's in Chesterfield Mall. I just ran across it and I went in to check it out. Two things happened. I did get this resource, which is on the list uh, because they run online auctions and they will, you can bring your things in, you can get them, you know, they'll tell you if they're valuable, they'll tell you what you could possibly get out of it. And then they set it up and they run their online auctions, I'm sure, you, you're going to pay them a percentage, but at least you'll get something out of it. What I found when I went there to my surprise is that I got rid of very, not very, but some money producing valuable um, antique printers blocks. I had a whole collection of them. I don't even know why I had this, but I had a whole bunch of them and I just thought, ah, oh, you know, get rid of them. And then I went into their place and I saw this whole cabinet with these printer blocks in it. And I said, oh, I didn't, I didn't know they were worth something. Oh, yeah. She says, yeah, they're collectible. They're worth something. So, you know, kind of check out the things you have to make sure that it's something that you're not just going to get rid of like I did. And I could have made some money on it. Um, Trying to think, let's see. If you don't clear things out, you could end up like a client of mine. I had this uh, phone call from a woman who wanted me to come out and help her. And it was actually, it was, the funny part, it was in Jefferson County, which I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't go there because they're after me. But I went there and I walked in. It was this big old house. It was the house itself from the outside was really great because it was a big old house. And I noticed though, that as I was coming in, there were boxes from Amazon on the front porch. So I thought it was kind of odd. I walk in, there were boxes from Amazon everywhere. It was like, you had to kind of maneuver through them. I said, what is all this? Oh, she says, I, I just, I ordered some new things. Okay, great. 
Then she, I said, well, what do you need? Well, I want you to do this area and I want you to do that area. I could hardly get through it. Then she takes me upstairs. There is an old toilet sitting on the second floor landing. There are rooms where I could not walk through. Her husband was a doctor and they lived like, Ew. Um, she was obviously a hoarder. But even though we don't think of ourselves as hoarders, if we continue to accumulate and accumulate, it ends up being like that. And I, I said to her, well, what are you going to do with all this? Oh, I don't know. That's why I called you. I said, well, you know, that's not really what I do. Oh, no, I know, but make some suggestions. Well, bottom line, I really didn't work for her because it was impossible. But um, it really made me think, wow, you can start out just thinking you're collecting something and end up with toilets on your landing. I mean, you know, it's kind of an extreme, but she got there. So um, the main thing I want to tell you is it is not daunting. It is not impossible. It is not depressing. It does not have to be any of those things. You can change your mind. You can say, hey, I'm excited about clearing this out. I'm looking forward to lightening up my life. I'm happy to have freed up space and I can breathe easier. My daughter said, both of them, they thanked me. And they said it was the greatest gift I gave them for being able to do this with me instead of having to do it when I'm gone. And, and they're right. It was wonderful to do it with them. Now, I don't know if all of you have that advantage as I did, but a friend, I mean, you know, uh, my sister has a friend that's helping her go through her stuff. And there is a difference when you just have somebody to kind of laugh with. My sister and I ended up sitting in my parents' basement for a whole month when my mother passed away. And we just, we shredded for a month. We shredded and we laughed. We just had a great time. As crazy as that sounds, but you can make any, you can turn anything into something positive and cathartic. And this is one of the things that you're a choice to do. So stop thinking of it as something Herculean that you cannot do and just start doing it. And with this resource list, you will have the, the things that you can refer to. I do want to tell you a little bit about the difference between goodwill, which I did, you know, sent some stuff to goodwill. But I focus more on Salvation Army. Uh, they also have a restore store that will take, uh, they even take like cabinetry, uh, they take, take furniture and so on. The reason I say about Salvation Army is that they don't sell the goods. A restore store does, but the Salvation Army, when they collect, they, they give it to people who really need it. And several years ago, <clears throat> ASID, American Society of Interior Designers, volunteered to fix up apartments in a building that Salvation Army had bought for people in transition, getting off of the streets and getting a job. And they were able to put these families or these people in these apartments. And as designers, we went in and took the donated items and furniture and so on, and we made them beautiful. We turned them into these really beautifully appointed apartments. These people were so thrilled. And it was close to Christmas time and they had a Christmas party where they invited us, the designers, and the people that were moving into the apartment and had moved into the apartments. Well, these people were thrilled. But at one point, this little boy around eight years old runs over to the my friend that was standing next to me and throws his arms around her legs and looks up and says, thank you, thank you. He says, I've never had a bed before. And it was just like, how wonderful that I was able to be a part of that. So there are so many people who never had any of the things that you have sitting in your rooms and in boxes. Give it to them. It's the best feeling in the world. So 
between being able to give things to people who really, really need them and have never had them and getting rid of them and lightening up your life, you're just going to be as happy as I am because I got to tell you, it feels really good to be unburdened by all that stuff. So any questions, please jump in. Okay, I'm going to start with a few of the questions in the chat. I know you kind of touched on it um, since the question was asked, but um, what other options are there for big pieces of furniture? Um, like I say, the Salvation Restore store. Uh, now, consignment, it depends on your furniture. Consignment shops, you could possibly make some money from that. Uh, and there's some that I listed on here. Estate sales, you know. Furniture does not bring in a lot of money. You know that when I did my sale, the thing that made me the happiest, there was two, two issues, and I did not make hardly anything on these pieces. But the fact, one was I had a baby grand piano. It was made in Chicago and from 1896 to 1902 was the dates. It was a Conover cable. It was in the Muni Opera for years and years and years and years. And the man who managed the Muni, the stage part of the Muni Opera, bought it for his daughter when she graduated from Juilliard. Now, the daughter got the piano and she was absolutely thrilled to death. But then she married a man who was in the military and they were trans they were sent out of the country so she asked her sister-in-law if she would keep this piano now you have to understand the sister and brother-in-law lived in a tiny tiny house in south st louis and the only place the only room this piano would fit was in their bedroom but it blocked the door and they literally had to climb over the piano to go in and out of their bedroom. And this went on for a few years. And when the, the, the daughter that owned the piano was supposed to come home and uh, they were sent somewhere else. And finally she said to the sister-in-law, you know, go ahead and sell the piano. Well, instantly <laughs> this woman put an ad in the paper and I went out there and, um, and I had my piano guy with me to make sure because I had already bought it. Well, that's another story. Um, anyway, he said, this is a great piano. Go ahead and buy it. And I did. And I had it and it was beautiful. And I had it tuned and fixed and all that stuff. And it was in my living room for many years. And my daughters took piano lessons, et cetera. Well, now it was time to move. I had no place for this piano. <clears throat> I don't think anybody really wanted it. And I started checking about what was I going to do with it. Well, it was going to end up costing me about $580 to have it picked up and brought to a landfill, which just killed me. I, I just, that destroyed me. And I thought, no, 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 it can't be. So when we did the estate sale, we advertised the piano. Fortunately, a young man came and he was a musician and he saw this piano and he bought the piano for $350. I was so thrilled because he was so thrilled. You could just see the joy that he had because he was getting this magnificent antique piano and he was a pianist. Um, so that was a great joy. And I was also thrilled that it wasn't going to cost me $580 to put it in a landfill. So there's there's lots of ways to rid yourself of things, and those things may not bring you a lot of money, could bring you a lot of joy. Just getting rid of them will also make you happy. What else, Daniel? Okay, so I'm going to bounce between the comments in the chat and then calling people with their hand raised. Uh, so we did get a good suggestion that small items and clothing can be donated to the MCJW resale shop. That is on my list. In fact, uh, why don't I do a quick, you want me to just run down the list? Uh, it's not, Daniel has the updated list, but I can tell you some of the things. The replacement limited, and that's for 
China and Yadros or whatever they're taking. They don't always take everything, but it's someplace you definitely want to check when it comes to that type of stuff. Codner Galleries, um, estate sale people. I happen to have used n and Estates and I was very, very happy with them. I have some other ones on the list. Encore Consignment, Mo Modern Sales Consignment. There are other local consignment shops that you can find. Go Google them, you'll find them near you. Uh, the Antique Mall at Fifi Road. I've actually gone and purchased things there myself. Um, and I also was cautious not to end up buying anything back of my own, <laughs> but they do. And you can get like, you can actually rent one of their spaces in their glass cabinetry. If you have small collectibles, you can rent a little space and they will sell, you know, you'll sell them out of the mall. So the antique mall, it's a good place for that. Um, the eBay online options, Neighborhood Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, NCJW Resale, Salvation Army and Restore Store, Goodwill. Then there's also clean out places like E and J Cleanouts for the things that you, you know, after you've picked through and you've culled out certain things and you still have a bunch of stuff left that you've got to get rid of, they have these companies that come and clean out. Simple Moves is one that I use that will, um, well, like for example, there was a sofa that my daughter wanted for her, her lower level. And so they will do simple moves like that. And they, I, I had them take that and one of my refrigerators over to my daughter. And it was less expensive than, you know, doing it with some big company. And they do a good job. I actually even let them move me here to the condo. And they did a very good job. Uh, junk removal companies, but beware, make really, really have them clarify what it is they're going to do and what they're going to charge. I had a very negative um, experience with college hunks. Um, so just be careful when you're dealing with these junk removal places, because they tend to tell you one thing. And then when they come out there, all of a sudden, it's going to cost a whole lot more, or they're not able to do it, all kinds of things. So just be aware of that. Okay. And there's a couple more. Uh, oh, I told you the Piddle, Piddle Crick. And that's really what it is. Piddle, Piddle Crick Hill um, in Chesterfield Mall. Uh, the list has the contact on it. Does that help? Next question. Okay, uh, Harvey, you had your hand up. Um, go ahead. It's it's me. Oh, hey, Wilma. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do Yadros have any value? The what? Yadros have any value? You know, the only thing that has value is if there's a buyer. That's where the problem lies. So that's why I would say <clears throat> connect with Codner Galleries. Um, and this Piddle Creek and check with them to see if, you know, they have someone. My problem is the man that I was talking about that does the antiques and things like Yadro and stuff, I can't find his, his information. When Merowitz did that, um, Daniel, what was, it was like the uh, treasure, treasure. Antique Road Show, remember? Yeah, we treasure, did that? treasure. Yes. This gentleman was there with Codner Galleries. And that's why I said, just talk to Codner Galleries and see if they can connect you with this man because it's possible that he might be able to help you if you have a collection of Yadros. Thank you. Thank you, Wilma. Uh, Rita, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, this is a very interesting. Thank you very much, Linda. Um, I did want to mention, though, for when you take things to get shredded, you need to make sure there's no paper clips or staples or anything like that. And the paper should be as flat as possible, not folded over or anything. 
Um, thank you for that, Rita, but they, they do take them. They don't want paper clips, but you don't always have to take out the staples. Okay. I guess it depends so, on where you're it, I think so. And that would be something you would check before you would take them. The main thing for me is that I wanted to watch and make sure that my stuff went in that shredder while I was standing there watching it. So keep that right. in mind. Thanks, Rita. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's um, a lot of good comments of different places, too, in the uh, chat, if anyone wants to take a look in there. Um, Linda, did you mention Home Sweet Home? You know, I didn't. Because um, someone posted it in there that they take donations for families in need, so they may be uh, oh, cool. uh, one that's worth looking into. Oh, that's great. Anybody else who has suggestions on stuff I missed, maybe you could you know, contact Daniel and add it to the list or something. Home sweet home is what it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks a lot. Okay, great. Of course, I don't have anything left, but it's always good to have it on the resource. Oh, one other thing I want to tell you, <clears throat> speaking of not having things left, I collect art glass, uh, mostly paperweights and small glass sculptures, contemporary. Um, I had an extensive collection and I knew when I was moving here to the condo that I wasn't going to have the kind of shelving and display areas that I had in my house. So I really had to cut down on them and I love them. So it wasn't like I was real happy to let them go. Then I realized I wasn't letting them go. I was actually giving them as gifts and I was giving them to people that I loved. And that way, Whenever I go to my family or my dear friends who help me move, I get to see my beautiful pieces in their homes and they get to enjoy the gifts I gave them. So they're great thank you gifts if you have something like that. And then you get to go visit them when you go to your friends or families. Linda, I've got a question. Do you recommend any certain type of order for downsizing, like smaller stuff first or like getting rid of the big furniture first or, you know, any uh, strategies that you recommend? Personally, I think getting rid of the boxes. If For me, I had to get rid of the boxes of pictures and papers and files and so on, because that for me was the bigger part of things. And I wanted to know, make sure that I got rid of all that in a safe way. So I had to focus more on that because getting rid of a piece of furniture, you're not at risk at anything. So, you know, I did the smaller stuff first and then, you know, tackled the other. Of course, the estate sale uh, was very, very helpful. And by the way, you don't have to be moving to have an estate sale. I know a lot of people think estate sales are only for when you're moving. They're not. You can just do it whenever you want to get rid of a bunch of stuff. I mean, it has to be a significant amount, enough for an estate sale company want to do it for you. But you know, <clears throat> it could be. Who knows? You might have a lot of stuff you could do a, a sale for. And they also do specialty sales. But I think you're better off with some of these, um, the auctions for the consignment stores for some of those things. Uh, Gail, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, uh, Linda. Yeah, Gail. I loved, I loved your story about the piano because I have a, pr a problem with my piano and it's more emotional than mm -hmm. I want to I have a piano, a baby grand bowl and piano that I, I learned to play piano on. And I loved your story because it's making me think twice. I'm around, I'm going around looking at condos, possibly moving <clears throat> in the very near future. And everywhere I go, I say, well, where am I going to put this damn piano? And I can't, and, and it doesn't work, you know. I know. And I, I eliminate and I'm saying, well, maybe, and, and it's really kind of annoying because <clears throat> I'm very attached to it. I still play occasionally, but I don't use it all the time. And it's a really hard decision for me. It and is, it was hard for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this piano. I keep keep it tuned. I'm taking piano lessons again, and I'm thinking, 
why it's such a, a, a sore, you know, in my thought, you know, it's, it's really kind of annoying that I, but you know, I, I really want it. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to make that decision when I decide to move because. Well, if, if you're still using it, Gail, and you're looking at condos, <clears throat> um, think about it in terms of if you, if your condo has like a large, say living room, dining room combination, and you mm -hmm. don't necessarily need to have a formal dining room space. Right. Put your piano there. Or if you have an extra bedroom, make right. it a music room with a maybe sleeper sofa if it's large enough to do that. And think in terms of that rather than just giving it up, figure out a way to keep it. Right. And some of the condos I'm looking at, <clears throat> moving is another story, looking at finding the right place because I'm really having a hard time with that. And Oh, there's, there was one for sale in here. That'd where be you, fun. <laughs> where, where do you live? I'm in Court de Royale. Court de Royale? Yeah. All right. So, does your, so some of these places that are freestanding, not freestanding, semi-attached, they'll have a lower level. Yes. I'm thinking exactly. that's, that's an idea for, yeah. for that. But my mom moved from New Jersey to Florida to St. Louis, and the piano always went with her. She played in her 90s. And oh, when she came goodness. here, she gave it to me. Yeah. And uh it's 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 a it's a tough, it's a tough okay. Thing. So your assignment is to find a condo that either has a lower level or an open space and keep the piano. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, John, you had your hand up. I think maybe you're wanting to comment about the piano, I'm guessing. Go ahead. You're, you're muted, muted, John. So uh, p we had a piano. Uh, we uh, it's it's impossible to to uh, sell them, and it costs you to get it to them. So we checked churches, schools, and uh, you know institutions like that, uh, and we ended up giving it to I think uh, Mirowitz, as a matter of fact. Nice. And. Uh, it was an upright piano. It wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't a, a grand or baby grand. But uh, I think that you know, check with the schools, private schools. I mean, they made uh, synagogues, churches. If they're if they uh, if, if they're willing to just pick it up, it's a good gift. And it's tax. Isn't it tax deductible? It probably can... would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good Someone job. mentioned in the chat that there's an organization in St. Louis called Pianos for People that, um, you know, might be able to help you if you're looking to donate. Oh, cool. That's good. I'm writing that one down, too. Um, so, Linda, we had a question. Um, did you find it difficult to pack and ship things that you sold online? I actually didn't sell things online. I didn't have to because I sold most everything from the estate sale and beyond the estate sale i gave my stuff you know things that that i i had certain places and things i wanted to give away i <clears throat> what i didn't sell through the estate sale i basically gave away so i didn't do any online done do you have a yeah, uh, if if it's really of value and you're getting some good money for it, you can take it to uh, UPS store or the FedEx store. They will pack and ship, but you know they charge. Uh, I, I sold some stuff on uh, eBay, and uh, I took it. Yeah, I added. I sold it for the price, and then I said shipping and handling would be extra, and I quoted them a price based upon. An estimate I got from them. So that you know that's that that's that's a common way of shipping on uh, uh, eBay. I know it is. Yes. Um, Karen, you had your hand up. Go ahead and unmute yourself, and then ask your question. Unmute. Unmute. That's my sister, everyone. My Hi. wonderful sister, Karen. Talking to us from the villages in Florida. Love you. Two things I I I, I would like to say uh, while I was trying to figure out how to use that hand thing. Forgot. 
<laughs> and the first one was, I'm in the midst of doing that now, downsizing again. Okay, because I've been at the villages now for seven years, and it's amazing how I was not going to add anything to what I already brought, and it happens. So I'm doing it again. The thing that I that I realized is that the same resistance came back. And so I start with the least important thing, the least important room, the least important closet, because once I get into the groove of doing that, I can move on to the next least important thing and on and on. So I found that that, uh, you know, a sim simpler way of, of doing it than um, than tackling the most important things. Uh, and also, there was a system that I used in Miami that to take what I knew I was going to take and discard that that I knew I was going to discard. But the hesitation was a maybe that went into its own pile that I revisited later. And, and that helped me a lot in, um, in doing that. I would say, who was it? Gail that has the piano? Well, whoever Gail. has the piano. Gail has the piano. Uh, not to give the piano up. No. Because when, when I came down here, and, and this is kind of funny, I have a friend helping me now. And she opened up my least important closet and she saw a whole section hanging with tablecloths. Hold on. And she says to me, tablecloths? Why do you have a whole section of closet taken up by tablecloths? And I said, you know, whenever I would, you know, it's a holiday or whatever. And she said, when's the last time you used them? And I, well, except for a couple about seven years ago. And then I showed her my drawer that is packed full of cloth napkins that go with tablecloths. And she's like, oh, my God. And I realized my whole lifestyle has changed. I don't even need a dining room, really. I am not entertaining. Nobody wants to reciprocate with entertaining. They all want to go out to the country clubs and the restaurants and what have you. And so, uh, you know, the things that that are least important are really least important. But honestly, I saw people take the kitchen nook, nook area and make it into a library with a comfortable chair. I saw people get rid of the dining room scene and make it into a, a sitting area with books. And that's where you can put your piano in the dining room. I have a hugely enormous master bedroom in this place and um and i could actually put a piano in there and mm -hmm. still not disrupt the bedroom scene so um there's lots of places you can put a piano because you're not living the traditional way that you were living and so and if that's something you're using definitely keep it i that's my opinion. and i gotta tell you i went down to miami when karen was going through her stuff and one of the things we had to go through were her scarves. She oh. had a thousand different <laughs> scarves. And I had to talk her into getting rid of some. Oh, my goodness, this was painful. <laughs> and we're talking scarves. Okay. So, but we had a good laugh and we had a lot of fun doing it. And this is accessorizing. Go ahead. Uh, just wonder. I was going to write. I was going to put it in the chat. But has uh, have you heard of Perfectly Placed? No, it's another one I haven't heard of. Well, you know, I think sometimes you have to realize that it's good to spend some money if it's going to clear your head, right? So they they are kind of uh, the original. Um, what do you call? I originally found out about them through the Container Store, and I have used them. I've been cleaning out my house since the pandemic. Now they are expensive. They're going to charge, but it's it's so reassuring. The um, I'm sorry. Um, you you know they'll spend three hour sessions. I'm on. You know they'll give you a year to complete everything. But it's it's a little. You know at the beginning it was a little overwhelming. But they even, you know they um they actually take pictures of some, some of the things before and after, like this beautiful. Uh, in my own house right now, it was a it was a closet that had 
too much stuff. We took everything out. And basically, I don't even do any cleaning. They'll clean shelves. I sit there and say, go through the three piles, keep it, donate it, or throw it away. And, and it's it does cost, it's worth every penny because I don't have to do it myself. And the thing with the scarves, I had, and they, they do <laughs> things in containers. I had like, uh, I don't know, like six or eight containers and she labels them and everything. And she put X amount of, contain of scarves in a, in a, she said, I can only fit 10 scarves in this container. Now you're gonna have to decide what are you gonna do with the other scarves? I had to decide what to, I, she had me try and close on. This isn't in style anymore. Get rid of it. She went, you know, so if you're willing to spend the money, it's worth every penny. And that's how I'm doing the throw. Yeah, you know, so I'm working with myself. Because I can't. And Gail, you said something really important that I was supposed to mention, and I appreciate it. You said take pictures. I had to give up an absolutely magnificent antique cabinet that was in my foyer, but it required higher than an eight foot ceiling. So I couldn't bring it here. And of all the things that I had to give up this time, that one still bothers me. But what I did was I took pictures of it. No, so she, what she was doing, I had a closet. I didn't have a, uh, a store, well, a storage closet or a, ca a cabinet for my kitchen. I took this enormous closet in the front hall that I've been wanting to reorganize for years. They took everything out of it. So it wasn't anything I was keeping everything out of it, we put it in the living room and I had three enormous piles of these three things, you know, keep it, donate it or throw it out. And then they had, the company came out, took all my shelves out, redid the walls, put all this organized shelving in and it's my favorite closet in the whole house, but I got rid of a lot of stuff to do that. So she took a picture and put it on Facebook without my name and put the picture of the before Mm -hmm. and the after to show you how you can reorganize. And then the, in the course of reorganizing, you're throwing things away. Right. And the photographs are also for when you can't keep something, but you still like being able to see it. That's why I took the photograph of this cabinet, because, you know, if I feel like looking at it, sometimes I'll look at the photograph. Mm -hmm. Take pictures of things that you're giving up, but you might want to see again sometime. So, Gail, someone in the chat um, asked the name you mentioned, um, that they missed that. Was there an organization name? The name of the company was called Perfectly Placed. Okay. Perfectly Placed. And if you want more information or, or people that want to get some information on, on the, the call, the container store, and they'll, they'll give you some good, ref, you know, good references. Okay. That's how I found out about it. Uh, Susan, oh, the person who owns the company is Susan Stewart. S T E W A R T, and and she has some <clears throat> wonder, she even has I had a whole wall of encyclopedias that I had did no use of for years. They literally took the stuff out, put it in the back of their car, and took it for a donation. Took it play, uh, to a donation place. I didn't have to do any of that. So they do a lot of extra stuff, and you're paying for their time, but it's really worth it. Good, good. Okay, any final questions or comments? Uh, sorry, I don't see a name, but I see your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute. I'm in here, can you hear me now? Yep. Mm -hmm. I just have to share one thing uh, regarding children's boxes that they leave with mother. It was post-college, it got dumped in the house here in St. Louis. The children never lived here. We moved when they were in college. And so, Seth came went through the boxes. I took all the stuff down to the shredder that comes to the university once a year for free. Great. I opened another box in another place. Oh my gosh, what are these? I got online. They were little pamphlets, stapled photocopies, $500 a piece. I shredded four of them, $2,000. Who knew? The artist, it was an artist. They were photocopied. He numbered them in red ink. Had I not looked online, first place I wouldn't have felt terrible that $2,000 went off to the shredder. Um, I texted my son, took a picture. He said, keep the others in that other box. <laughs> and um, 
so it's a double-edged sword. You've got to get rid of things, but there are going to be some mistakes. And and this one, we nailed right away. <laughs> yeah, I made mistakes too, but I'm still glad that I did what I did. I did throw a giant box of my husband's bowling trophies out. Not worth anything, I'm sure, but kept them for so many years just because, except nobody saw them because they were in a box in a storeroom. So that's the kind of stuff. Get rid of it. <laughs> Okay, and I saw one person, more person with their hand up, but I didn't see who the screens moved around. Oh, Nancy, Nancy. go ahead, and then John will. Go ahead and I, have, I have one question I put in the chat twice so I got missed. Um, two things, actually. Is there any demand or interest in a collection of blue and white um, Wedgwood decorative pieces? as well as a rather sizable collection of the Weiser beer steins. Oh, the beer steins could possibly be, depending on the age and the rarity of them. So before you do anything with the beer steins, definitely check that out. Uh, I, I, that's a possibility. As far as the Wedgwood, uh, this replacements limited may have some information on that that you're going to you know that's on the list you're going to get i did notice that they did have some one of the times i looked on their website so check that out and again of course you know check with the rest of the uh the items on the list Right now, I can't, I couldn't answer that question, but I would definitely look into it through some of these resources. You don't have a, a suggestion about how to go about um, the, the thing with the beer steins? Well, again, it, Google is wonderful. You can just, I, do you go on the computer? Do you? Yeah. Okay. It's, we're on it now. <laughs> oh, that's true. Duh. Hello. Um, Linda, you're laughing at me. I get it. <laughs> but um, anyway, just Google it and you'd be amazed the stuff that you connect through that. Also, check with eBay, look at your steins and then see what they have and what they're selling for on eBay. And that way you get some idea of what. But if they're the older ones or more rare ones, yeah, there's got to be some value to it. Okay, uh, so thank you. I want to mention real quick before we do the uh, close uh, that ne next week at 10 a.m., uh, we have one of our signature programs of the week that was. I see a lot of new people here, so you may be interested in that. Uh, we talk about current events. Um, Harvey, did you want to talk about the week that was for a quick second and let them know what it is? Oh, go ahead and, yeah. Uh, every other week, Sheldon Inger and myself do a program called The Week That Was, and we take a uh, something that's happening currently that we think has a <clears throat> real interest factor for the people involved, and mainly it's a discussion on major issues. Uh, like we'll talk about the Supreme Court, uh, recent decisions. We talk about what's going on in the Ukraine. Um, I believe Sheldon is going to be talking this week on uh, Trump's uh, hearings. So we invite you all to come on and join us. And as I say, we present what's going on, and then we ask for your input. And that's uh, so thank you, Harvey. So John, uh, closing comment, maybe you had your hand up. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, Linda, I was wondering, what did you do with the big cabinet that you loved? Well, I know. Basically, a dealer bought it. I was never told exactly what she paid for it. It was probably next to nothing. I wasn't even told where the shop was that it went to, um, I knew I couldn't use it unless I cut a hole in the ceiling, which you cannot do in a condo. And um, I just had to let it go. It was one of those things I just had to say, okay, I loved it. Took a picture of it, had to let it go. 
Okay. Second thing, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, eBay. I I use eBay all the time just to to evaluate some uh, some right. objects that I have and hopeful yeah, to see if they're worth anything or if right. worth uh, listing them. And finally, uh, to all the ladies who are in attendance, a reminder that uh, if you have a significant under uh, a significant other that uh, is interested in fell, suggest to them that they uh, get in touch with Daniel, whose uh, information is on the chat, and also he can be reached at the Mirrorwood Center. And uh, finally, I want to thank Linda for. Uh, this terrific program. Uh, I think we've all got a few uh, little uh, tidbits that, oh, I think that's a good idea. I never thought of that. So thank you, Linda. You did a great job. And thank now you. we know what to do with all that stuff, maybe. And I'll be sending out the list that Linda had been talking about throughout the program of all the different organizations and things like that, that you know, so you'll have a hard copy on your hand. So thank you everyone for being here today. Um, and again, I wanna to add to John, thank you, Linda. Oh, you're welcome, it's been a pleasure. I have to have a shout out to Patty Teeper who I haven't seen in ages and ages and she's on here, but not a picture of her. So I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> and Linda, all of you- What was the name, where do you live again? The name of your uh, condo? Oh, Cor de Royale. Which is, um, yeah, oh, it's yeah. on Old Ballast. It's right off of New Ballast. Okay. Just uh, south of Olive. Okay, Great. thank you. All righty. Linda, thank you. You're welcome, Marilyn. Okay. Uh, and hi, Karen. <laughs> okay, take care, everyone. Thank you, Daniel, Stay for cool. all your help. Thank, thank you, Linda. You, thank you.